we're delighted to have Dr. Barry Polanski in our Patient Prism Studios this morning. We're having wonderful discussions on many topics. Uh, one of and 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 and, and Dr. Polanski has been has been such a motivator to an entire industry uh, in terms of his thought leadership uh, into many aspects of dentistry that go well beyond just the technical skills. Uh, he talks about the psychology, the positive psychology. Uh, he talks about a lot of philosophies um, that he has borrowed from Aristotle and the Greeks, uh, ethos, pathos, and, and logos. Um, and, and, and he talks about how to, how to incorporate those philosophies into a dental practice. But you know, um, as, 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 a, as, a, as a student of, of, of business, um, I always think about, my God, I would love to learn these principles. Uh, Ray Dalio talks about them in his books, right? You gotta live your, your business principles. Is how do you really put the philosophy into action? What's that? It, it's hard, right? It sounds all good, but how do you put it into action? Yeah. So this goes way back. And this, this is the biggest question for me. You know, um, uh, at the Panky Institute, you know, LD, he, he drew this cross. You know, know, your, know yourself, right. Socrates. Right. Know your patient, know the other. Know your work and apply your knowledge. Apply your knowledge is the key. And, I, and I, I really believe that, and I'm not saying the Panky Institute or anybody, that's the most difficult thing. How do you, apply. as they would say, how do they apply it? How do you get her off the shelves? <clears throat> how do we do this? How do you take all of this philosophy right. and just and make it real? And so, um, you know, for me, that's always been the biggest question. Sure. And over time, it's, it's gotten answered. Okay. Okay. So let's go back to the Greeks for a second, because I love the Greeks. Absolutely. Okay. And... Um, Let's, let's go talk about, you know, how, how the Greek philosophy actually started. Uh, remember, Athens in 500 BC was a democracy. Yes, it was. The first. It was sitting right there in Europe as part of the Persian Empire. But it stood alone because it was the only one. Now, it was the only place where, where young people had to make a way for themselves. Whereas in the other parts of the Persian Empire, they were told what to do. Okay, and so parents would have to send their children to school, and they would have to get an education. And so the Greeks had three words, physics, logos, and ethos. Now the physics basically was what you did. If you were a mathematician, that was the physics of what you did. If you were a dentist, teeth were what you did. That's right. That's the physics. Sure. But the logos was a problem in Athens. It was how to put an argument together sure. and then how to express it to mankind. Sure. And that's kind of like case presentation, isn't it? Right. <laughs> okay. Very much so. Well, the Greeks taught that in their school. Very interesting. But then there was another factor, the ethos part. It's ethical behavior. Well, not ethical behavior, but basically, how do I live this good life? Sure. How at the end of the day that we talked about, am I going to have a good life? And that was the ethos. And that's what Aristotle and Plato were teaching. Sure. But then there was another guy. He was a friend of Socrates. His name was Zeno. Okay. And um, where Socrates would go teach his philosophy in the, in the uh, Agora. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. A couple of blocks down, there was a little porch called a stoa. Stoa, yep. Okay. And under that stoa, students would come, and they would learn from Zeno, and they would learn a philosophy. But the thing about stoicism, which is what it became, was that it had to be practical. I see. It had to be useful. And so stoicism drew a lot of students. They didn't want to listen, but they wanted to do. And that's right. where application comes from. Well, the three, big, the three most famous stoics that we're left with today are Epictetus, Okay. who was a slave. I don't know if you know that story. Mm -hmm. um, there was Seneca, mm -hmm. who was a playwright and a politician. And the most famous Stoic we have today uh, that we remember is Marcus Aurelius, mm -hmm. who was the emperor of Rome. So all of three of those Stoics have left their works, and their Stoicism is basically about how useful a philosophy can be, the practical application of it. Okay, so let's go now 2,000 years later. Sure. Here we, we're back with Marty Seligman. Positive psychology, same thing. And what they call it in positive, positive psychology is interventions. 
How do we create an intervention for our own lives so that we can apply a lot of these things that are going to bring better well-being? Sure. Well, let's take the V first, okay? When I was in the doldrums of my life, sure. the first thing I did, and by the way, I heard Tony Robbins talk about this. Absolutely, okay? right on the beach. You right. run, you, you just run, run. <laughs> That's right. okay? Right. Talk about the V. Right. Now, that was the first lesson I learned, Sure. and it, and it works. So if you're a dentist out there and you're not feeling real well, start running. Start running. That's right. Okay? Start doing something. Move. Move. But what about the P? What about the positivity? What kind of intervention would you use there? Well, how about this one? This one works. Okay. You've heard, you've heard of this. It's called three good things or three blessings or gratitude. Every single day in a journal, just think of three good things that happened. Absolutely. Well, you woke up today. That's a good thing. The sun's out. That's a good thing. It could be anything. I met Barry today. That's it. That's, That's a, a good, good thing. thing. That's right. <laughs> and if you record those things right. every day, a funny thing's going to happen. Now, if you do it once and you don't do it again, it's not going to happen. But That's Seligman's right. study and his research has shown that after 30 days, right. you will see positive changes. And that's what an intervention is. This is absolutely fantastic. I could talk all day about this. Because <laughs> we, we could really, really motivate a lot of people. Uh, by giving them, again, this is such a practical tool. Keep a gratitude journal, write three things down that you're grateful for for 30 days, and you'll be more positive. Yes. It's fantastic. Yes. Thank and you. and there's a, well, mindfulness is another one, but maybe that's a time for another. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> okay. Cool.